In this video, we will be answering the big question, how rich is Michael Bloomberg? Just like any other billionaire, Bloomberg has billions of dollars to his name. According to Forbes magazine, he is actually the eighth richest person in all of America. In fact, his net worth is a whopping $76.8 billion, which makes him even richer than Trump. But hey, unlike Trump, Bloomberg is a self-made billionaire. Now, if we had to boil it down, then Bloomberg is a modern renaissance man. Not only is he an entrepreneur, but he is also a financier, author, politician, and activist. So there's a lot more to this billionaire than what meets the eye, especially when you consider his massive mansions across the world and his personal fleet of helicopters. Despite being an insanely rich individual, Bloomberg still runs his own company with pride, spends selflessly on charitable organizations, and has already signed the Giving Pledge. But where does all his wealth come from? What does he do with all of that money? Well, let's find out. First off, he founded Bloomberg LP. Now, if you think that last name sounds familiar, well, then you're definitely right. Even if you know about Bloomberg now, the company's origin story is rather unusual. Bloomberg's career took off in financial services in 1966 at the Wall Street investment bank called Solomon Brothers. Back then, the now billionaire's first job was just counting bonds and stock certificates like a regular employee. Over the years, he moved up to a bond trading position, becoming partner in 1972, and finally reached the general partner position in 1976. Three years later, Solomon Brothers moved Bloomberg from his well-esteemed position of head of equity trading and sales to run information systems. Now, most would consider this a demotion, but Bloomberg knew exactly how to use it to his benefit. The new position put him in charge of the department that implemented computer technology. And if you're watching this video right now, then we're still using that same technology every single day of our lives. Bloomberg stayed with the company for three more years and learned everything he needed to know from there. Then, when the company was acquired by Fibro in 1981, Bloomberg happily left with a huge $10 million severance package. And of course, that was the kind of money he needed to change his life. Bloomberg used that cash strategically to start a company called Innovative Market Solutions. Along with his three other partners, he created a computerized system to provide traders with real-time data on U.S. Treasury bond prices and other financial calculations. Since these people were super smart, they sold it as a subscription service, which meant they just kept making more money every month. This system was first called the Market Master Terminal, but he eventually renamed it to the Bloomberg Terminal. Talk about some self-branding. Merrill Lynch was one of the first major clients and investors at the company. In fact, he purchased 22 of these terminals and gave them $30 million for a 30% stake at Bloomberg Terminal. According to Bloomberg himself, his empire only began after he was fired from Solomon. If he didn't, he'd probably still be working for Citigroup. Over the years, his company grew into what we know today as Bloomberg LP, a financial data and media firm that has taken over everything they touch. The company became super successful throughout the 80s and was already worth up to $2 billion by 1989. In 2022, Bloomberg LP recorded $11 billion in revenue. They run the business news cable channel Bloomberg Television, Bloomberg Radio, and even a monthly magazine called Bloomberg Markets. And of course, Bloomberg's never-ending sea of cash just keeps piling up. And after that, he got into politics. In 2001, Bloomberg decided that it's time to enter the world of politics. He ended up running for mayor of New York City as a Republican and was elected a few weeks after the 9-11 attacks. When he was in office, Bloomberg was already a billionaire. Despite spending about 12 years as a mayor, he only took a salary of $1 a year. If he took the real amount, he'd be about $2.7 million richer right now, but that's probably just peanuts compared to how much money his company makes. And if that wasn't enough, then Bloomberg ended up spending around $650,000 out of his own personal fortune throughout his time as mayor. Now, we should tell you, though, that most of that money was for private plane travel. When the billionaire wanted to run for mayor for the third time, he single-handedly campaigned to change the law that limited officials to only two terms in office. And, of course, he won. His 12-year run as New York City mayor ended in 2013, and that's when the guy became a full-time philanthropist. He also went back to his role as CEO of Bloomberg LP in 2015. Next up, Bloomberg owns a lot of real estate. If you're wondering what the billionaire does with all that money, well, the answer is that he buys a lot of real estate. It is safe to say that Bloomberg has stunning houses all over the world, and it seems like he loves catching flights halfway across the globe to relax. 
In New York City, Bloomberg spends his time in a massive five-story mansion on Manhattan's Upper East Side. In fact, towards the end of his term as mayor, he spent about $2 million renovating the entire place. He also has a $20 million home in the Hamptons that he bought back in 2011, which is probably the biggest house that he owns because the estate includes a whopping 22,000 square foot Georgian mansion. So what do you even do with a house that big? Oh, that's right, 11 bedrooms, 8 bathrooms, and all the other luxurious things from your wildest dreams. We've also heard that Bloomberg owns a waterfront home in Bermuda. Back when he was still mayor, he used to fly one of his mini private jets down to the island about twice a month. So if you think Bloomberg just bought a house in Bermuda and decided to live in it, that is totally not the case. He actually demolished the entire place and replaced it with a three times bigger $10 million home for himself. And as of 2019, he was still a part-time resident there. Also in 2015, Bloomberg wasn't shy to drop $25 million on his London mansion. This place was once owned by British novelist George Eliot, but the seven-bedroom Chelsea townhouse is now the billionaire's second home in the city. Did you think he only had one house in London? Nope, he's already had an apartment on Cadogan Square for years. Now, Bloomberg also spent billions of dollars on the most stunning offices for his company. He really sounds like a sucker for real estate because Bloomberg LP has some of the most gorgeous offices that we have ever seen. The company's European headquarters is a massive 1 million square foot building right in the center of London. Since it is so big, the office took around a decade to build and cost up to $1.3 billion. In fact, in 2018, this building won the Sterling Prize for Architecture and is often called the world's most sustainable office. Also, the company's NYC headquarters are on Lexington Avenue in Manhattan, so you might have heard people call this massive building the Bloomberg Tower because it spans over 900,000 square feet and has 29 floors. This 55-story building is very close to the billionaire's heart and is actually the 40th tallest building in New York City. Aside from offices, the NYC headquarters of Bloomberg LP also has retail outlets, restaurants, and 105 luxury condominiums. Apart from these two headquarters, the company also has over 100 more stunning buildings across the globe. From Dubai to Australia, you'll find a Bloomberg LP office almost everywhere. And hey, Bloomberg is also a well-known philanthropist. The best part about Bloomberg's fortune is that he established Bloomberg Philanthropies, a company that he uses to make donations to charities and causes that he supports. Through philanthropies, the billionaire has already donated over $8 billion to climate change, gun control, and other important causes. In fact, in 2019, it was reported that he gave away a total of $3.3 billion. Back in 2015, Bloomberg donated a $100 million check to Cornell to help them construct a new tech-based graduate school in NYC. Just two years later, the campus opened on Roosevelt Island. Over the years, the billionaire has also donated more than $3 billion to his alma mater, John Hopkins University. Even though his first donation was only $5 in 1965, he has continued to shower the university with expensive gifts from time to time. He proudly supports undergraduate financial aid and recruitment at the university to make sure that more students get the same opportunities that he got. Since Bloomberg is also a strong supporter of gun control, he has already pledged over $50 million to a new campaign for strict gun restrictions. Back in 2006, he co-founded Mayors Against Illegal Guns during his tenure. Then in 2014, he pledged a much higher amount to build a grassroots level network of voters who advocated against gun violence. This eventually led to the formation of a nonprofit organization called Every Town for Gun Safety. And as if that wasn't enough, then Bloomberg is also amongst the group of billionaires who have signed the Giving Pledge. This means that he has vowed to donate at least half of his fortune to charity. Finally, let's talk about Bloomberg's failed presidential campaign that he spent billions of dollars on. In November of 2019, he entered the 2020 race for U.S. presidency as a Democrat. In his official statement, he said he's running for president to defeat Donald Trump. According to Bloomberg, America couldn't afford four more years of Trump's reckless and unethical actions. After that, the billionaire continued to self-fund his campaign. In the end, he reported to the Federal Election Commission that he had spent well over $1 billion. Unfortunately, Bloomberg ended up dropping out of the presidential race in March of 2020 and started supporting Joe Biden instead. But even before he announced his presidential bid, most Democrats already believed that he had unlimited campaign cash, loyal staffers, and a super impressive philanthropic record. 
With that amount of money, Bloomberg could easily outspend much of the Democratic Party. One report tells us that he spent up to $30 million on TV ads in a single week before even announcing his candidacy. So to give you a little bit of context, that is more than all of his Democratic rivals spent collectively in an entire year. Interestingly, Bloomberg also refused any political donations when he ran for president. In fact, he also announced that he wouldn't accept the $400,000 salary if he became president. According to his chief advisor, Bloomberg isn't a person who can be bought. Since he had never taken a single political contribution ever before, he wasn't about to start when he ran for president either. Despite dropping out of the presidential race, Bloomberg is still the only candidate who personally donated $300,000 to the Democratic National Committee. In the end, we think it's fair to conclude that Michael Bloomberg is a very rich man, but despite being one of the richest, his intentions are still in the right place. Since he grew up in a small town in a middle-class family, it seems like Bloomberg understands the value of money. In fact, it's pretty impressive how he keeps using his fortune to make things better for America and the whole world. Plus, it wouldn't hurt to learn a thing or two from the self-made billionaire himself. If he's still using all of his money strategically, then maybe we could use some of his tips too. And that is a wrap for this video. Which part of Bloomberg's story actually shocked you the most? Tell us all about it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you check out other awesome videos on our channel. Click now to watch.